What grade would you give your English vocabulary? Well, if you know the 21 verbs that I'm going to ask you about in this video, you get an A plus in my book. Thank you, Rep, for the challenge. As usual, we'll start with some slightly easier words and then work our way up. And make sure you stick around to get your grade at the end. Okay, ready to get started? Here's verb number one, two, flourish. Flourish. And does this mean to grow, to die, or to hide? To flourish is to grow or develop in a healthy way. Paul's business began to flourish after he posted some local ads. Verb number two, to veer. Veer. And does this mean to stop and rest, to change direction suddenly, or to slice through something? If you're veering, you're changing direction suddenly. The driver veered to avoid hitting the oncoming car. Verb number three, to assume. Assume. And does this mean to make a fool of oneself, to refuse an offering, or to suppose something without evidence? To assume something is to suppose it's true without evidence or proof. I assumed you would bring your own lunch, so I didn't make an extra sandwich. Verb number four, to flaunt. Flaunt. And does this mean to shut down, to show off, or to shake out? To flaunt something is to show it off in an obvious way. Anna clearly enjoys flaunting her wealth on social media. Verb number five, to skimp, or to skimp on. And does this mean to abandon a pet, to speak generally, or to use less than one should? To skimp on something is to use or provide less of it than is necessary. Don't skimp on sleep if you want to be healthy and energetic. Verb number six, to glimpse. Glimpse. And does this mean to transform, to see something briefly, or to ignore a call for help? To glimpse is to catch sight of something briefly. We glimpsed a handful of shooting stars on our camping trip. Verb number seven, to pamper. Pamper. And does this mean to give special treatment, to overlook a mistake, or to inspire action? To pamper is to give special care or comfort. Femi likes to pamper herself with a day at the spa from time to time. Nice work. That's the end of round one. Are you still on track for that A+. I hope so. Now let's turn up the difficulty a little bit. Here's verb number eight, to heed. Heed. And does this mean to pay attention, to misunderstand, or to deceive? To heed is to pay careful attention to something, especially advice or a warning. Samia didn't heed the weather alert and got caught in a storm. Verb number nine, to decipher. Decipher. And does this mean to erase and remove, to divide and conquer, or to interpret and understand? To decipher something is to interpret or figure out its meaning. It took researchers several weeks to decipher the ancient script. Verb number 10, to oust. Oust. And does this mean to remove someone from power, to praise someone insincerely, or to battle someone on horseback? To oust someone is to force them from a position of power. The university dean was ousted after his misdeeds came to light. Verb number 11, to atone. Atone. And does this mean to repeat a mistake, to make amends, or to avoid responsibility? To atone is to make amends for a mistake or wrongdoing. Jack wanted to atone for the harm he had caused the community. Verb number 12, to forfeit. Forfeit. And does this mean to give up or lose something, to receive or earn something, or to protect or save something? 
to forfeit something is to lose it or give it up. The team had to forfeit the game because they didn't have enough players. Verb number 13, to eke or to eke out. And does this mean to abandon a project, to scream in frustration, or to do something with difficulty? To eke something out is to achieve it or do it, but with great difficulty. The family managed to eke out a living by farming a small plot of land. Verb number 14, to chafe. Chafe. And does this mean to inundate, to irritate, or to acclimate? To chafe is to cause irritation or soreness, often by rubbing. The collar of Max's shirt chafed his neck and left a red welt. Okay, you're two-thirds of the way there. Great job. Okay, are you ready for some very tricky verbs? Let's find out. Here's number 15 to cajole. Cajole. And does this mean to criticize, to refuse, or to persuade? To cajole someone is to gently persuade them into doing something often through flattery. Jessie tried to cajole her friend into going to the party. Verb number 16, to seethe, seethe. And does this mean to feel boiling anger, to feel lasting calm, or to feel fleeting happiness? To seethe is to feel intense anger or agitation. Paul sat quietly after the argument, but you could tell he was seething on the inside. Verb number 17, to lampoon. Lampoon. And does this mean to ridicule, to refute, or to extol? To lampoon someone is to ridicule them or criticize them in a satirical way. Saturday Night Live is famous for lampooning American politicians. Verb number 18, to filch, filch. And does this mean to drop something, to steal something, or to plant something? To filch is to casually steal something. The boy filched a candy bar from the rack when no one was looking. Verb number 19, to foment, foment. And does this mean to decompose, to purport or to incite. To foment is to incite or to instigate action. Authorities accuse the defendant of trying to foment violence in the streets. Verb number 20, to bequeath, bequeath. And does this mean to resell stolen goods, to pass on assets after death, or to marry into a royal family. To bequeath is to pass one's assets on after death, often through a will. Much to her children's chagrin, the wealthy widow bequeathed her entire estate to the butler. And finally, verb number 21, to atrophy. Atrophy. And does this mean to win a competition against the odds, to grow flexible and agile, or to weaken and waste away? If something atrophies, it loses strength or effectiveness over time. After months of inactivity, Jess's muscles began to atrophy from lack of use. And that's it. You've completed the entire quiz. Amazing work. So, what grade did you get? Well, here's the breakdown. And listen, if you didn't do as well as you wanted to, don't sweat it. Building your vocabulary takes time, so stick with it, keep practicing, and you'll get a little bit better every day. If you enjoyed this quiz, please leave a comment and let me know. And as always, thanks for watching, good luck with your studies, and be well.